when you get more comfortable approaching attractive people in your daily life, when you improve your online dating profile and create options there, and you have a healthy social life, you're getting options there. Rejection becomes a lot less painful because you have options. When there's only one date you've been on in the last two weeks and that doesn't go well, the thought of going on another date, the thought of sending another message online is daunting, is painful. You feel dumb, you feel angry scientifically from that rejection. And when there's no other options on the horizon, it's easy to give up. And what we wanna talk about last is something that we see a lot of our X Factor Accelerator members, bootcamp participants facing after a breakup. And Johnny, you touched on this earlier. When you've been in a committed relationship with someone, you start the we and your friends become shared. You have a social circle that includes your significant other and their friends. And sometimes you may even stop spending as much time with your friends and distance grows. You become disconnected. Maybe your friends are single and now you're in this committed relationship and you're putting all of your effort and energy and time spent together to foster this relationship. And you come out of a breakup realizing you don't have a great social circle. You don't have a wolf pack to go out with and meet new people. You don't have people that you can talk about your dating life with. You are in a situation where it's work and it was the significant other. And now you're in a situation where you don't have that vibrant social life. And this is a huge pitfall because even if that first date goes amazing and they want to see you again, you are not going to be an attractive option if you don't have a social life. If you've put everything into your career and then you've solely focused on finding the one, but you don't have that group of friends, you don't have those events, those people to introduce this partner to, you don't have an active social life that keeps those boundaries up from you over committing and only spending time with this one person you just met, you're going to, again, struggle in the dating life. And science shows that having a healthy social life actually improves your dating life, right, Michael? Well, that's what the National Survey of Health and Social Life found. Um, this is also known as the Chicago Sex Survey, by the way, just to you know get your attention here. Ooh, la, la. And, and what they did <laughs> <laughs> was they interviewed... Uh, three and a half thousand people between 18 and 59 years old. And this is considered one of the most accurate and complete studies about the romantic and sexual behavior in the United States. So it's an interesting read. Now, what they found in this study is what they were really interested in, among other things, is how people met their partners, whether we're talking about a marriage or whether we're talking about a one night stand. 68% of romantic encounters happened because the two lovebirds got introduced by someone they both knew. 68%. So in most cases, they were introduced by a friend or a family member. Um, they were introduced by coworkers, by classmates, by neighbors. And only 32% of those encounters happened through someone introducing themselves. 68%. That's a lot. And it makes sense that your uh, friends, your, your social circle introduces you because these romantic encounters that you're meeting there, these uh, romantic interests that you get introduced to, they're known as weak ties. You're not directly connected to them, but you're connected to them through someone else. It's probably safe to assume that your friend, someone who's close to you, someone who's in your life, has a lot with you in common. Maybe just like you, they love the outdoors. Maybe just like you, they love board games. They love going to the movies. They love going and working out. So there's a good chance that the friend of your friend has those same interests. And boom, you got something in common to do, to talk about, to laugh about. And also, the other thing that comes in here with those weak ties is if your friend thinks that this could be a good fit, there's a really good chance that this is a good fit because your friend knows you. That's the difference between talking to someone randomly at a bar or at a concert. I mean, yes, you have something in common. You're at the same bar, you're at the same concert. But your friend, your buddy is saying, hey, this person, I think I should introduce you. Like you, you would be a good fit, right? That, that is a five-star you know, recommendation that you're starting this, this contact, this dating, this relationship off with. Mm -hmm. 